back to oh. uh, I think I'm going to be hearing myself talking maybe maybe not can you hear can you hear me double I cannot can you hear me double negative Ooh, I think we might have figured it out. You did it. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. Third <Her> time's <laughs> a charm. <laughs> well, welcome back again, Dr. Dave. It was so nice to see you again. <laughs> and we're back with What If, which I am so excited about because I just uploaded this to Amazon yesterday. Um, so we're going to be doing a launch soon. And I'm really, really excited uh, to share this with you. So thank you for doing this with me. And uh, yeah, it's so much fun to connect with you and uh, work together. So thank you so much for that. So awesome. congratulations. Thank you. Yay. Yay. It's awesome. Yay. Lots of good things happening and uh, it's another great year and lots of good things coming with this book that we were talking about this morning. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll keep you posted on those as well. And uh, yeah, so lots of, uh, lots of good stuff. So very exciting. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'll do again today is just ask, what is the message for today? So let's just take a nice deep breath in. And out. And just focus our intent that we'll be given the message that uh, we need to hear today, however that is. All right. Ooh. What if today I raised my standards? Hmm. That is a very good question. Oh, this needs to be. Can we extend this an hour? <laughs> <laughs> that is a big Ooh. topic for sure. So shall I share what With the book has to say? And then we will go into discussion and talk about this. Mm -hmm. So do you have standards that you live by? Do you pride yourself on high standards by, for yourself? Or are they mediocre, which gives you a life of settling? Did you realize you were living a life that you had settled for? Is this the type of life that you really want? When you settle, it usually means that you live in a reactive world, reacting to the situations and events around you instead of consciously creating a life that you really want. If this is the type of life that you are happy with, then that is your journey. But if you want to raise your standards and consciously create an amazing life, then read on. It begins with goals. What is it that you want to do, be, or have? The sky is the limit, so dream big. Next, write down your goals, one goal per sheet of paper. Now write down the steps needed to achieve them. The next step is to determine the amount of time you are willing to give each of your aspirations. You may have other commitments, which you need to consider. However, it is not selfish to put yourself first before you begin doing things for others. If your goal is better health, for instance, if you don't care for yourself first and foremost, you won't be able to care for anyone else. So schedule time each day, preferably in the morning, so you can complete your focus before the day gets away from you. Because it will. <laughs> Raise your standards, don't settle, and go create the life you dream of. So that fits oh, in nicely God. with nature's diva's hydration, doesn't it? Hi yeah, but hydration, I mean, like all of them, actually, because hydration, we talked about then, you know, um, the bergamot, which is releasing, which would be some of the misbeliefs of our standard is the 
high yeah. standard is it really you know so release that let it go yeah. breathe exactly. in that bergamot and let it go and high sip mm, high sip right is up yep high sip is up tomato tomato whichever excuse me <laughs> i just saying it I, I i feel like i need to say excuse me after <laughs> And, and what's that that main focus or medicine that it brings? Hiss up for you to stand in your truth and mm. be who you're here to be, and it's along for the journey. You know, it's like, hey, you can do this, but you need to step up and do it. Mm -hmm. I knew the answer, but I just wanted to hear it. <laughs> 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 because it's so good it's so good it is. you know i mean that is like well this might be something but that was the perfect recipe to start a monday isn't it I mean, though from you know basil ber bergamot and and hyssop excuse me um <laughs> i have to always do it <laughs> but you know but it, it's looking like let's look at this okay and and get yourself surrounded by the the right things that you need so that hydration factor of making sure that we're full um yes. of what we need you get to fill that in and so hydration can be love it can be water it can be support it can be all of those things are we well hydrated in you know those other elements as well absolutely and, and then, as the the book is asking us to raise our vibration or raise our standard well, then that lets us know like where we're at right now. It was set somehow for some reason, some good intention somewhere, but is it relevant now? And the next card tells us, no, it's not. <laughs> so how about we get to that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and let it go. And I've got a really cool story to share. Uh, when yeah. I lived in my house, um, I had an apartment upstairs. So once my daughters had gone through and they lived there and then they went and moved out onto their own, I moved upstairs and then had my main floor for my business. And um, I had therapy rooms and things like that. And so I love big windows. So I like lots of light. So I had put this little table I made my office in the one room but it also had like all my uh, supplies and it was like a store as well so when I was uh, going through this and it's like you know like how's your office is it set up for for business and I'm like yeah I've got an office you know so my table was like this big around now my table <laughs> my desk here goes this way and it goes this way because I like to spread things out, you know? And uh, so I go down and I'm looking at it. I've got the smallest little corner. It is the darkest. And meanwhile, all my other office stuff is in the other room, which I don't like to sit in because it's too dark, but I had set everything up for me to receive customers. And it was during COVID. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> um how's this working for you brenda and it's like <laughs> well <laughs> let's change this around so i then took that room that used to be my living room but now is i created my office where i could see out the window and it had everything i needed within reaching distance and what a shift because i didn't recognize it until it's like wow Wow. And I had stuff on the floor and like nothing fit on this table, you know, other than the laptop. And then I got stacks and it just wasn't working. But just even that, to have that awareness that what's going on in your environment, what are you settling for instead of, you know what? No, this needs to change. I need a space. I need whatever that is and create it with the intention of this is what I require for what I am doing instead of, oh yeah, I'll just tuck myself into this corner where nobody goes. It's all dusty and whatnot with all the piles of stuff and no, create the life you want, create the space that you require in order to do what you do. 
that makes you happy, that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So once you made that shift, what did you see change? Oh, it was huge change because I would always be discombobulated. It's like, okay, I got this going on and this going on and this going on, you know, and I was never able to focus on anything. So after that, like I had created a space where I could do videos. I didn't have to figure out, okay, move all this stuff to do a video. I had it all set up that way. And everything just flowed after that. It was so, so much nicer. So, and even in uh, this office here, I used to be the other way and something kept telling me, nope, flip your, flip everything around. So hence, and this is not a pretend bookshelf. I will tell you that it's not pretend. I can take my books off of there. <laughs> it drives me crazy because people like, I'm like, oh, I don't want that bookshelf. It's a whole wall of books. And they're like, oh no, it's just a picture. It's like, yeah. so I told my friends if I ever go into like a senior's home, because I had seen something, they had posted something on my Facebook wall of this wallpaper that's all books. I'm like, don't you dare. <laughs> that would just be so mean. <laughs> I need to get to the books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a fan. Uh, and mm. I actually have a backdrop that's exactly that. It's a library. <laughs> <laughs> I would mm. much rather have the library, but this one, so much easier to clean. This is true. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I do get dust on this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was just loving listening to the words that you were using as you described that whole scenario and how it played out in your life. Because you were using some survival words and then you got into thriving words. When you mm -hmm. first started, when you noticed that it was too small, that it was constraining, um, that you were um, scattered and you couldn't focus on everything and each detail and thing that you wanted you started using the word need what do i need that's a survival word mm -hmm. and so if i want to survive or i want to change and move forward i have to create a change so that's what that that survival part of that is so using that word need and then moving into once you've changed that and then it opening up then you were using much more of the i was able to address many other things i was able to find this wonderful flow and i'm like yeah because the energy was flowing but then because mm -hmm. our our environment will mimic what's happening to our internal as well so as you opened you into that bigger space and opened more possibilities you did exactly what you know today's message is about as you rose you you raised the standard for you of allowing yourself to take in more light, being able to have, you know, being more exposed to your outer world. And that's when it began to flow. It Absolutely. couldn't find the little tiny address of you <laughs> in the little tiny one bulb in the corner. <laughs> but now you're like, ta da! <laughs> yeah. And flowing. How beautiful is that? That's fantastic. And just to add to that and taking up more space, because I find a lot of clients, they just, they don't want to take up any space. It's like, oh, well, I'm just allowed to have this much space. And it's like, no, you are big. You have a big light. Shine that light and take up space because there's mm. so much. Just shine your light as much as yeah. you can and take up that space because we are so much more than the energy around us we are large we're just like compacted into this little human being but we can take up space we are allowed to we have we're giving you permission to take up as much space as you want to be who you can be because that's huge it's important. Absolutely. Oh, so it is. I would probably even invite us to 
ponder whether that's not really our truest mission. Mm. When we decided to take up a human vehicle, of how much space are you willing and do you have the courage to take up? And then how much light are you going to fill with that as well? Absolutely. And, and, and so when you allow your light, then it's effortless. When you just turn the light on, it just is. Nothing can be in that space. Nothing of a lower frequency can exist in that higher frequency of vibration. So once you open that heart space to allow and, and be that full version of, of shining that, that love light, then more and more things are attracted to that that are, of its, that are like itself. Uh, and the things that aren't, they vibrate away. They go mm. away. Because it just like that magnet, you know, it's pushed away if they're in that negative um, charge, you know, energetically. And so I think that for a lot of folks, when the statement that you made about is they don't think that they have the right to, to take up more space. It's a double-edged sword. If I take up more space, that means I have to manage more space. They think that's going to be a struggle, but it's only because of where they're at right now. It might be a struggle in that space. But when you begin that higher frequency, it becomes effortless. Yeah. Bring that vibration up and turn it up. Because think about it, if you only have a little tiny flashlight and you're trying to find your, your keys in the middle of the yard at night, okay, well, how about turning the floodlight on? How about that? Absolutely. Oh, well, that was easy, <laughs> right? So it, it's the same thing for ourselves. And then it's also, it does really come into that one question for a lot of folks is being worthy. Am I worthy enough to be able to take up space? I think that's really what it boils down to, not even just mm -hmm. the responsibility of having to maintain it, but am, who am I to take up more space? No, you're the exact person. You're the exact light that is needed in the space that you're in. I promise you, that's the only way that it works. It's yeah. the only way that it works. So I think we said this on the last, last week is, get your happy little butt back into your vehicle and turn on the lights. <laughs> mm -hmm. And can you imagine if each and every one of us took up as much space as we could and shone our lights, what that's going to do to this world? Mm. Absolutely. Like what a wonderful world. Mm. And it's just about activating those lights everywhere and turning them on so that the light gets rid of the darkness. That's a known fact. Where yeah. there's light, there is no darkness. So the more of us that just take up as much space and shine that love out and, you know, just beam that love out and be who we are, who our souls are, life, it just flows and it just gets better and better and better absolutely yeah you know the um one of the things that have the the message from the from the book that gave us today about raising our standard um i think the first question that the first question that i had to pose to myself as, as well as everyone else is the standards that you have presently that snapshot of what those are are they your standards or are they mm. someone else's? Did you accept someone else's standard that this is the greatest, the, the most, you know, where you can be only um, that you do have, you're doing the best that you can. Okay. Is it, is it really? And who told you that? And are you aligned with that still? Because there might've been a time that that was a higher standard and you met it. Great. What's next then? What's the next standard? Cause we can always, always, raise that vibration we can always raise that standard and so Absolutely. it's super important in in i think every avenue of our life is to find out get really really real with ourselves and and truthful of those standards that we hold are there are they ours and they may be in fact ours but it would be a shame to find out later on that it's not even our own standard that we've been um, holding on to that has been keeping us from our potentials. 
all those well-meaning family members and friends that sure. have decided what standards you live by? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What a great and, question. And how can how can they and, and I, I'm glad that you said that the well intentioned because it almost always is. It's usually trying to keep our loved ones safe, and that's why yes. those are imposed. Um, how do they get to have a higher standard if they don't know that it exists? Because if they have that standard and they then gift it to you, it's supposed to be a stepping stone, uh, a stepping block, because those folks that gave it to you on a lower frequency, they're giving you the highest standard that they can, and they can't see over the wall if they don't even know that what exists on the other side of that. So mm. step on that standard and be firm in that foundation. But that now is allowing you to see over that wall. Now, what is the next standard that you're going to strive to be and become so that you in the next generation then gets to be able to ask again, what's that higher standard that I can begin aligning with again? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have to determine why we're here. We're not living somebody else's life. And so many of us were at some point, it's like, well, my parents want me to be this and grow up to be this and all the rest of that. But your parents came down here to do something. You came down here to do something. You didn't come down here to listen to your parent to go, okay, well, that's what you want me to be. Okay, well, that, no, you came down here with a mission that needs to be figured out, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and that's right. where the standards come in as well as like, well, what am I here to do? Maybe it's to step out of that box or stretch that comfort zone of mine that other people are like, oh no, you want to just stay right in that, you know, stay right here. I was like, nope, there's other things. There's bigger and better things that I want to do. Yeah, they're going to be scary. But you know what? Once I do them, it's going to be easy after that. And it's going to get, I'm going to get more confidence to be able to do more things to whatever my mission is. So absolutely. And there's always that next step. What's next? And I remember when I was in school for social service work, I liked getting perfect on things. This was something I was like, all right, I, I did everything. I checked all the boxes like, okay, now I need a hundred percent. And the teacher wouldn't give it to me. And I got rather upset and I'm like, I've done everything. She goes, yeah, you have. She goes, however, there's always room for improvement. So if I was to give you a hundred percent, she goes, you'd stop there, which I wouldn't, but some people's minds are, okay, well, I'm done. Right. But she goes, there's always room for improvement. So always, always improve. She goes, yes, you did it perfect. Yes, I'm telling you that, but I'm not going to show it on the paper because there's always room for improvement. So mm -hmm. it was a hard pill to swallow, kind of irritating because I like that. But now it's like, it doesn't matter because I know who I am and I'm always reaching for that next thing and it's not that i'm it's because i'm unhappy because some people will look for okay well what's next well i did that well what's next well and it they're never filled inside right so right. my cup is filled and flowing over because i just love what i do and now it's like it's the excitement of okay for instance, my book. Okay, now it's up on Amazon. Now I get to launch it. Now I get to do this. Now I get to create new products. So it's always raising that standard. And how am I going to share this? And you shared some wonderful ideas today on different ways I can share that. So it's always looking, okay, well, I could do this. I could do this. I can do this. So there's always options. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And I, I, I believe to the core of, of most human beings that they do always want to strive to be more. Um, and it isn't, it's, there, there is that place where a lot of folks recognize or believe that that is a negative, like you were talking about, but it's not, it, it's actually meant to be something a positive because then we can 
continue evolving. That's the only way. I mean, our work, it's in our DNA to evolve and adapt and get better at what it mm -hmm. is that we have and do. Because then the next step, we don't, it, evolution is that continuation. We're supposed to keep doing it better. If we don't, yes. then we stop existing because we perfected it. So everybody's like, all right, we're out of this place. Done. Uh, no, still here. So that means work to be done. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so raising your standards is really important. And I you know, challenge everybody today, like think about where you are right now. What's your environment like? Do you have a peaceful environment? Or are you settling? Is there noise? Is there Maybe somebody smokes in the house and that is affecting you. What are you settling for? What can you change? And what are you going to say, you know what? We're done here. Like we need to raise our standard. We need to do things differently for everybody. Mm -hmm. And really take a look at that today and see how your life can shift because it will mm -hmm. when you start deciding to raise your standards. You know, um, real quick, with that invitation that you just gave to everyone of looking at those standards and what's in your life and, and everything else, one of the mistakes that I see a lot of folks make quite often when this process begins is they think that they need to change things because they're not having a higher standard. And so that means things outside have to change, meaning in their environment, in their work life, in their relationship, in you know, all of those things. It's not our job to change them. It's our mm -hmm. job to do what we need to do to change that. So not necessarily somebody needs to move out as it is, I need to change my standard of what I accept. Yes. This relationship I might not accept. This language I might not accept. This behavior I might not accept has zero to do with them, mm -hmm. only us. And what we're allowing because we're teaching everyone around us how to treat us so by accepting we taught them it's acceptable absolutely I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that is so important if you don't treat yourself well then everybody else is gonna treat you the same way so raising those standards means that you have high standards for yourself and what you will accept and what you will not accept for your own health and well-being. So yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, like the perfect example is, um, you know, if someone's complaining about nobody has time for me to take care of things that I need, you know, in, in my family, you know, and especially moms, I can see this happening a lot or for, the, you know, the full-time parents where they just don't have time for themselves um, because their kids or their families not giving them time to help them or be with them to take care of them, you know, themselves. But you're, you're teaching them that because you're not demanding the time for you to take care of you. So you've taught them that you're last because you, I, I want to take care of the kids first. Okay, well, the kids learn they come first, you come second. So when they have to make a choice, they're going to pick themselves before they pick you. You have now taught them that trait. They have to yeah. unlearn that and they need to know that the, the, the rules of the game have now changed. So these are the things that I'm now going to choose to live and abide by. I have changed the standards of what I'm accepting and not in these. This is what that is. I hope that you're going to join me in this game um, or this journey, however you want to word it. Um, and, but this is, this is the new rules. And so this is what I'm going to live by. And I really hope that you can show up and be that person with me because I'd like to have you on the journey. If not, that also lets me know that this is where the journey ends. Absolutely. See you there. Yeah. And, and that has zero to do about changing anyone else, but it is setting them up for success being able to, now they know what you're changing and what you're doing with this higher standard that we are now holding for ourselves, now they can match that and they can honor it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's their, it's their choice, choice and their journey, but you also have your own choice and your journey. And yeah, and both come with a consequence. Consequence yeah. does, doesn't have to be a negative. A consequence no. is just an end result of something. And so that can just mean that you're no longer on the journey.
but it can be like, woo, we get to have this now adult to adult relationship now, as opposed to me rescuing you or just me being your caretaker. You know, now I get to have you as the, the, the partner, the, the equal finally in our mm-hmm. relationship kind of thing. So it's supposed to be a positive. It's supposed to be a healthy thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we could go on for hours yes. on yes, uh, this one. <laughs> one I think this topics. is going to have a whole chapter in my uh, next upcoming, whatever that looks like. Because <laughs> mm. there is so many different aspects of Absolutely. raising your standards and living a reactive life rather than consciously creating. It's just waiting for something, somebody to call and say, this has happened. And then you get to react and if nothing's going on, then you meddle in everybody else's business, you know, and that's your life rather than, Hey, I came down here to do something. I'm going to figure out what it is and focus on myself rather than everybody else and what they're doing. So yeah, there's just so much that, uh, we can unpack there, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a wonderful topic and one that, I hope everybody considers today and really takes a look at and uh, maybe make some changes and, you know, drop us a line, drop us a comment and let us know what you felt and how you've, uh, how you're working through it. And uh, I'll definitely keep everybody posted when we're going to be launching so that you can get a book of your own and do these what ifs every day. And tune in with us on Mondays as well. And uh, as we unpack yet another what if and positive possibilities, because there's just so many options that are available to us. And sometimes we just need reminding what they are so that we can open our minds to a different way of consciously creating. Yay. Absolutely. Love it. (laughs) Love it. So good. So fun. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I really do hope that, that folks do um, hop on the chat and when they get to really, um, when they get to watch this um, on their time, um, be able to just interact and, and be able to share what is it that, that you're realizing or what did this bring up for you? You know, what is it that it was, it stopped you in your tracks. If here's that thing that, that, um, Okay, let's go with standard. Here's a new standard. If you're asking that question about what do I need to raise my standard in my life right now, if it doesn't stop you in the moment, then I invite you to dig deeper, dig down deeper until it stops you. And you've really got to look and feel, feel your way through it. We mm-hmm. might, you might want to check out the previous episode that was earlier for the right recipe to help you move through that because we already set you guys up for the success for that so go back and if you haven't listened to it you got a recipe for you so we got you (laughs) absolutely yeah it's nice how everything connects into each other as well as jules's meditation uh that she posted a couple days ago so it's all just right connecting together the universe is working in the background going "Ooh, you know this is all juicy and it all connects together so it's great how that's happening fantastic thank you so much for letting me join you so fun and thank you to the divas of bringing all those wonderful recipes and you holy cow the courage of you channeling the information to ask how we're going to raise our standards all the what if questions so thank you for that thank you and thank you for joining me and i look forward to connecting with you again next monday at 10 o'clock and Hopefully, if you're available now that we've figured out the Facebook Live thing, that you can ask questions as we're having our discussion and uh, yeah, taking part of that on Facebook Live. So hope you have a wonderful week and wherever you are in the world and take care. We'll talk to you soon.